that it is SF and BM where SF stands for shear force and BM starts for bending moment. Now, what this term means, let me explain to you by drawing a diagram here. Let us say here we have a horizontal beam which is supported at its two ends. I will call these ends as capital A and B. The length of this beam I will take it as capital L. Now when we are loading this beam. Suppose we have a load W which is acting over this beam. I am just showing you one single load. There can be more than one load acting on the beam. Now because of the action of this load, what can happen? Since the load is acting in the downward direction and the beam is supported at its two ends, there are chances of this beam to break into two parts. This breaking of the beam is called as shearing of beam where the beam is splitting into two parts. So this is called as the shearing action of the beam and the force because of which the beam gets sheared that is called as the shear force. Next bending moment. Suppose I will take an example that the beam is not shearing that is instead of breaking it is just bending. Here we have an example in which I have shown you that how the beam would be bending. So here we have two conditions. One in which the beam would be breaking into two halves that is shearing of beam. The second condition is bending of beam and this total action which we say it is the shear force and bending moment. Now in this chapter mostly what we would be doing we would be drawing a beam and below that we would be drawing some diagrams that diagram will indicate at which point the beam will shear at which point the beam will bend. So basically shear force and bending moment this chapter deals with graphical solution where you have to show a beam below that you have to show the shear force diagram and you have to show the bending moment diagram. The diagram itself indicates at which point the beam would be breaking, at which point the beam would be bending. So now after this small little concept of shear force and bending moment, let me give you the definition of shear force. So my first definition is shear force. Here I will say that it is defined as the algebraic sum of forces acting either on left hand side or right hand side of the section. So as per the definition here which I have written shear force is defined as the algebraic sum of forces acting either on left hand side or right hand side of the section that is suppose if I take a section of the beam here in this diagram as we can see if I take the section of the beam at this load then shear force would be the algebraic addition of forces either on the left hand side or on the right hand side of the section that is either you add all the forces which are on the left side of the section or you add all the forces which are right hand side to the section and that will give you the shear force value. And since shear force it is a force 
so its unit will be newton or kilonewton after this the first definition let me give you the second definition that is of bending moment the second definition bending moment it is defined as the algebraic sum of moments of forces acting on the left side or right side of the section so here as we see suppose i take a section on the beam that is similar to the shear force example if i consider the section at the middle of the beam then the moment which is produced on the left hand side i have to take the addition of all the moments here in this case i have only one force which is the reaction offered at point a i'll call it as ra and the reaction offered at b i'll call it as rb so on the left hand side i have just one single moment that is ra into if i consider this as half of the length then this would be ra into l by 2 and if i take the moment on right hand side it would be rb into l by 2 so these are the moments either on left side or right hand side of the section here in this example we have only one force towards left one force towards right so the value of bending moment would be single on both the sides but if you have some different kind of a beam where you have more number of loading then you have to take addition of bending moment of all the forces either to the left or to the right and since we are writing bending moment its unit will be newton mm or kilonewton mm so here we have written the definition of bending moment after this let me give you some sign convention for shear force and bending moment because while solving the problem we need to know which shear force has to be taken positive which shear force has to be taken negative similarly for bending moment you have two values that is positive and negative that would be understood once you know the sign convention so now let me give you the sign convention which we have to remember before solving the problems i'll say that first i'll start with the sign convention for shear force if i take a section on a beam then if to the left of the beam there is upward force and to the right of the beam to the right of the section there is downward force both these forces we have to take them as positive similarly if i take a section instead of upward force to the left of the section if we have downward force to the left of the section and in place of downward force to the right of section we have upward force to the right of section both these forces we have to take it as negative these sign conventions are very very important for solving any problems on shear force and bending moment so this was the sign convention of shear force now let me give you the sign convention for bending moment let me give you the sign convention for bending moment
if I take a section now if there is clockwise moment to the left of section and anti clockwise moment to the right of section both these moments has to be taken as positive and these kind of moment they are called as sagging bending moment i'll write the short form for bending moment as bm then if i take a section to the left instead of clockwise moment if there is anti clockwise moment and to the right instead of anti clockwise moment it is clockwise moment both these moments they have to be taken as negative and this is called as hogging bending moment so here i have given you all sign conventions for shear force sign conventions for bending moment whenever we would be solving the problems we have to know these sign conventions because without them the problem is very very difficult to solve now after giving you all the sign convention let me give you all some important instructions for drawing the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram the heading is important points to be noted while drawing SFD and BMD let me give you some important instructions that you'll have to remember while drawing SFD that is the shear force diagram and BMD which is the bending moment diagram so let me start with the first point the first point is that length of SFD and BMD must be equal to the span of the beam this is the first point which we have in front of us that is the length of the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram must be equal to the length of the beam which they are giving in the problem second point sfd is drawn below the loaded beam and bmd is drawn below sfd so here i have written the condition that shear force diagram should be drawn below the beam which is given and bending moment diagram should be drawn below the shear force diagram then for simply supported beam bending moment that is bm is zero at the supports if we have a simply supported beam then bending moment will be zero at the supports for cantilever beams bending moment will be zero at free end then calculate sf that is shear force and bm that is bending moment at all critical points then if no load is present 
between two points then SF will be constant. So these are the points which we have in front of us that would be needed all these points would be needed while drawing or solving any problems on SFD and BMD. As I have told previously shear force diagram bending moment diagram this chapter would be dealing with some kind of solution which is in the graphical form that is you would be having the solution in the form of a diagram. So for drawing that SFD and BMD diagrams we need to remember these points. The first point which I have written is that length of SFD and BMD must be equal to the span or the length of the beam. SFD is drawn below the loaded beam and BMD is drawn below SFD. Next for simply supported beam bending moment is 0 at the supports. For cantilever beam bending moment will be 0 at free end. Calculate SF and BM at all critical points. If no load is present between two points then SF will be constant. So these points we have to remember before solving any problems.